Oh, yeah, pretty, pretty much. I uh, was just really thankful. Um, I had the opportunity to coach here today the first time. We get a chance to go out there. But I think uh, really the big shout-out should go to uh, the walk, everyone that showed up to the walk. I mean, they did an amazing job. Uh, the band, the cheerleaders, dance team, uh, and just all the fans, you know, all the family and friends. I was very, very uh, pleased and thankful. And, um, you know, it was pretty good to see all that. That was a good show for our, our players also, and they really appreciate it. And I want to make sure they know that we're very thankful, and that was, um, that was, that was pretty legit. Hey, Fran, uh, we saw Marlo go out of the game and come yeah. back to the sideline with crutches. I know it's early, but do you have any sort of update on him and his status? Uh, he could be gone for a few weeks, but he'll be straight. He's a tough kid, so we think he may be gone for a few weeks uh, just from seeing already like how it went and going, and usually that's something that happens, but uh, we'll figure it out. You know, We're going to do his best for him, uh, make sure that he uh, can still be around regardless if he can't play or can't play because uh, he's a leader of the football team. You know, When he's in, it's a different ball game, but, um, you know, Monotony of football, you know. Yeah. Fran, congratulations. Thank you. Just looking at uh, the wide receiving core and, and the tight ends as well, Rondé Gadsden, Zed Haynes, as well as uh, Jackson Meeks, a bunch of those big catches, Trevor Pena having a historic day for himself. Just what you can say about the receiving core overall today. Uh, they did a great job. Uh, Ross Douglas, uh, Coach Nixon, um, are really good football coaches, and they've trained those guys up. Uh, we did a lot. I thought the offensive line and our wide receivers were two of the biggest upgrades on our football team, and both of those guys did really uh, – both of those units did a great job. So just very thankful for them. And, um, I mean, Kyle could throw, so it helped a lot. Terry Collins, it's all about sports. First of all, Coach, congratulations on being undefeated as a head coach. Um, real quick, talk to me about the difference in the preparation this week with being a head coach versus in the past uh, uh, assistant coach or a position coach. Uh, just a lot of things you have to do when it comes to the entire team. You know, I was in charge of the secondary before. Now it's the entire team. I uh, meet with at least six to seven players every day. So having the opportunity to meet with all those guys and then all the other things, like everybody's problems and, and situations come to your desk. So you got to make sure all that stuff is straight. Um, but I mean, it's still, I'm, I'm involved. You know, I'm out there coaching and trying to coach all the time and coach special teams, defense, you know, every position, just running around, trying to hold guys accountable. So, I mean, it's pretty cool. Hi, Coach. How you doing? Good. Yourself? Good. Uh, as you were standing in the tunnel waiting to lead your team onto the field, uh, your first game, game as a head coach, were there butterflies going on? What were you thinking about? And how do you feel getting the first game out of the way? See, I needed to go back and use the bathroom again. I was so scared. <laughs> I'm talking about I, I called my wife probably like three times. And um, just throughout the day, I've been tight for the last three days. I've just been nervous a little bit, just not wanting to let um, – the fans, you see the fans? I want to let them down, you know, and making sure we do it the right way. But um, yeah, I was nervous, but then as I seen those players, and I seen one of my little league football coaches, and it was just like, all right, let's go play ball. You know, I actually seen him, it was crazy. I got to see, I seen him, and I was like, wow, it's pretty legit. I had no idea it was coming. And that's what, just kind of like, all right, let's go. Let's go play ball. Fran, a guy like Kyle goes out and has the first series that he had. Um, do you guys say anything to him, or do you just know that he's going to, you know, sort of shake it off and be okay? No, I just mess with him. Like, ah, y'all went three and out. You know, I just mess around with him because you know what he can do. You know, he's a good football player, and he's we got that kind of relationship. Like, ah, you'll be all right. Get him next time. It's just like, you never worry. And um, I think that we needed that. We've never dealt with adversity. You know, we got to be down 6 nothing. There was a lot of things that we were able to deal with throughout the game that helped us and showed that, you know, we'll continue to play, we'll continue to count on each other and do things of that nature. So, I mean, they're not getting down. I mean, Kyle's a good good football player. You've seen him right there. I just sent, uh, sent Ryan Day a bottle of champagne for allowing us to get him. It's pretty cool. Steve? Fran, along those lines, uh, you talked about being a little tight yourself the last couple of days. And, you know, Chris mentioned uh, the way that Kyle started on that first drive. Do you say anything to the team as that first quarter wound down? Because you know, second quarter you guys got clicking and you know settled in and got moving and, and things were all good after that. Do you say anything to the team at that point? I was just trying to fall back on the training and I was like uh, snapping on the D line because I think they they were a lot better than they were playing. 
you know, the front seven. I was like, like, what are we doing? This is not what we practice. They're hitting seams on, like, they're doing different things. And it wasn't about, like, scheming us up or doing it. It was literally we weren't hitting. And that's what we do. That's what we, like, buy into. That's supposed to be our DNA. And we weren't hitting them. Like, we were diving instead of using our pads. You know, we weren't, like, striking blocks and knocking guys back. And they were, they were out playing us. I just didn't like what was happening. So, you know, I just kept telling them, you're not doing what you were coached to do. Fall back on your training. You know, we're out here. Fall back on your training. Christian, right there on the end. Coach, congratulations. For what makes uh, Trevor such an effective option uh, for Kyle? And what did you see in training camp that um, led him to have this great game today? I just think that uh, he studies the game the way Kyle studies the game. You know, the kid's always studying, always going through stuff, always working. And uh, when I first got here, he came to my office. He was one of, like, probably about the, within the first ten guys that I met. And he said, Coach, I want to get closer to God. I'm always getting hurt. I'm always doing this and that. And it was different things. And we did some stuff together and kept showing him. And we were holding each other accountable. And he takes care of his body now. He goes to sleep more. So, like, he's doing all those things because he's been that good. He just had a lot of injuries and things of that nature. But he's just growing up. You know, when you become a senior, it's a big difference than when you were before. And, you know, just – I'm not saying it's structure, but I think he's put structure into his life. There's a little more structure now. So when there's structure and you can follow your plan that he has for the week, he got a time management sheet, and he just follows it to a T. And um, he practiced really, really hard, and it showed up for him on today. Cooper, the second round, black shirt. Uh, Coach, going back to Trevor, just how much does it add to have a guy who's kind of like a Swiss Army knife out there to add around guys like Aronde and Zed for Kyle's weapons? I mean, it's always helpful. The more players you got that can make plays, the better off it is, you know. Right over on the side here. Sorry. Coach, how, um, how impressive were those first couple possessions in the first quarter? Y'all held them to field goals. They had possession almost the whole quarter. It, it could have been pretty bad if they scored a few touchdowns there. That's why you got red zone defense. You know, you you want to make them attempt field goals. You don't know, hope they don't score them. You want to make them attempt field goals. Somebody got the ring. But you want to make them attempt field goals. And uh, we were able to do that, and they made a couple of them. But it was, a, it was big stops for our defense to be able to do that in the red zone because let's talk, if they weren't stops, then that's 14 points. You know, and then there's more points they've had from that. So I think we stopped them, what, probably four times down there. That's 12 points that if you go the other way, that's 28. It's a different ball game. So we just got to fix out in the field. You know, we'll fix a few things up. Uh, there's a couple guys just not making certain plays. But, I mean, was, I guess it was big to answer your question. Now, the red area is a, a part of the game that we wanted to make sure we could dominate the red area. Mario on the back TV platform. Coach, all the way back here at the TV platform. Sorry. Little guy, weren't sure. For you, what did you learn from game one? Uh, I think I got to control my composure a little bit more. I was like acting like I'm at practice still. So I think I got to fix that. I'm going to work on that. I'm going to pray about that, fix that. Um, I just learned that it's fun. You know, you get to compete. It's just football. It's not, I've been doing it my entire life, but now I'm just – the leader of the football team, but I've been doing it my entire life. I just learned that uh, our guys got a chance to win, um, learned how to communicate with the rest more. I never had to talk to them as much as I talked to them today. So talking to them a lot, different things that um, I was asking them a lot of questions. You know, still want to know, you know, when can I go do this? How far will I go out before you throw a flag? So it's a lot of stuff like that that I was talking to them about. But I mean, I, didn't, I mean, it's football. I've been doing it since I was nine years old. So it's just get to learn a little more of the game, but not much more that I learned. Um, I was really um, thankful that I was on CAI all night and just trying to listen to that. My wife told me I'd go to sleep, um, but it came through and it helped me at the end of the uh, first half. You know, that was something that was I was worried about. Like, I didn't want to mess up, you know, when it came to the end of the first half, end of the fourth quarter, being able to put the team in good situations. And I just had it, you know, and it was pretty cool. That helped me a lot. Um, I learned that they are they're resilient. They have each other's backs. You know, when the defense wasn't going the way that they wanted to go, the offense held them down, did it. And then when you see when the defense went three and out back to back, like three times in a row, the offense was able to go and score and capitalize. So you can see if you put it all together, they'll be really good playing complimentary football. But you also saw that they um, were able to pick up the slack when, they, when their brother wasn't doing it in that form. So 
Um, I learned that we are we trying to live dark on the football field. Fran, you just mentioned the end of the first half. I'm curious, the, the decision to go for it there inside the minute, push for the touchdown, was that you? Was that Nixon? And I guess how confident were you in the offense that you were going to be able to execute that there? We do it in practice all the time. So it was me. I was like, all right, guys, we got three timeouts. If they don't get this, I'm going to call a timeout on first down. Then we did it on second down, third. I knew what they had to. So I was like, I want to make sure that I call these timeouts. And then we always only had to use two of them because they threw the ball. So that helped us by them doing that. And um, I knew that when we had 50-some seconds, we would do it. They score on us all the time at practice. So we knew, like, all right, let's go score. You know, let's go push it down the field. Let's get in the end zone. Um, but it was just like practice. You know, it happens all the time, and I always see them do it. So it was just like, dang, that was just like practice. Why they would kept statements running off, screaming just like practice, you know, because that's what they do all the time in practice. Chris? Maybe along the same lines, Fran, but in the, in the fourth quarter, um, Yassine gets stopped on the three plays, and you didn't seem to think about kicking a field goal when a lot of coaches would have gone up three scores. What made you sort of want to finish that drive or score a touchdown there? Well, just because, like, I mean, your gut, right? The fourth and one, we on the one-yard line. We tried to do it three times. I just didn't want him to feel that he was tougher than me. And we wanted to score. As our team, that was something that we needed to do, I felt, for us to go and score. You know, like, we're tougher than them. We wanted to show that we can get in right there on that fourth and one. So um, that's what it was about. You know, I didn't, we just wanted to, wanted to compete. And last question to Carson. Coach, congratulations on the win. I know you said you like to live in the present. You're not thinking about Georgia Tech yet. But what are you taking away from today, both positive and negative? We better stop the run <laughs> and the quarterback. You see them? I mean, they got a great quarterback. Coach Key coached me in um, college. Uh, Coach Mogerts is on that staff. He coached me in college. Um, so we got to stop the run. You know, we got to stop the quarterback from being able to run. I mean, every game, they're all different. Styles make fights. We'll see what happens next week.